Hello everybody and welcome to another Business Spotlight interview. Uh, we've got a fantastic one today. We've got Kim come from Shapcots. Kim, tell us all about your business. Well, I'm Kimberly Shapcott from Shapcots Accountants and we are an accountancy practice who work with a range of clients to help with their accounts, their payroll, bookkeeping, CIS, tax advice it's a really whole range of things from their accounting and tax perspectives so we work with clients who are just getting started or established businesses from very small ones so we've got the odd like mobile hairdresser taxi driver things like that all the way up to businesses generating in the region of 10 million sort of turnover which is obviously quite a range of different companies one area we work quite widely with is property clients so we work with those that have small buy to let properties, just one, through to portfolios of up to about 35 to 40 properties. Some of them incorporated, some of them in their own name. There's a lot happening in the tax world with things to do with property. So there's always different discussion points for developers or people expanding a portfolio, starting a portfolio, selling a portfolio. There's always something going on and obviously much to discuss and decide depending what people are looking at achieving so we kind of try and work with people figuring out what they're trying to achieve and we try and find a way to help them do that in the most tax effective manner possible brilliant and i'm sure lots of people will be giving you a call to actually talk about that sort of thing Kim. now how long has the business been going it's been going 40 years so it has been going as long as I have been alive, but only just. So my father actually started the business back in 1984, just after I was born. And then after that, really developed from very much a dining room table business or kitchen table. My dad always says dining room table um, business. And then just developed from there and took on some employees. Having taken on some employees, we merged or acquired another practice. So doubled the team size and then really just continued expanding from there really um, up to the current team of around 20 in our offices on the Wyvern Business Park near Pride Park in Derby. Fantastic. So obviously your dad set it up from kitchen, dining room table, a table in the house, <laughs> which is absolutely fantastic. What a great story. And now in some lovely offices uh, on the Wyvern. Um, did you always think you'd go into the business? No, um, definitely not. I think um, as a teenager, it was very much against what I was ever going to do. And then you get that, well, what am I going to do? And that's like, well, dad's doing all right as an accountant. Maybe I'll go into accountancy and then figure out what I want to do later. And that was probably 20 years ago in the figuring out what I want to do later. Um, but no, not necessarily. But I suppose I've always been around it because my parents started the business when I don't even remember it's kind of just always been around that sort of environment so having that freedom having some of those things that you can pick and choose what you want to do when you want to do it and that sort of thing I suppose has always been in the background there so when I got the opportunity to kind of come and join the business it seemed like the right move for me so yeah um brilliant and probably a bit more entrepreneurial than I used to be with setting up the property companies with my husband and doing other stuff on the side with him as well so I probably moved more in that direction as I've got older and probably a little I say fearless but I think you've got to be a bit fearless if you are um in business especially these days and all the changes that are happening well that's a really really good point and a great share I mean sort of so with the benefit of hindsight knowing what you do now what would you do differently I suppose now looking back I probably I'm a little too in the business and I think as someone who my father was very much in the business I'm very much in the business and I think the aim if you're kind of looking at developing growing exiting a business you need to be less in the business I've just had a meeting with a client today and he's very much it's that what are you doing oh I don't really do anything in the business these days and it's like well, that's awesome. That's that's where we all kind of in some ways want to be because I suppose that Action Coach, you're also looking at that side of things. It's how can you work your system, your business to work for you? I think it's that reliance on you being the business owner. In essence, you want to be the entrepreneur setting up the business, 
to run itself. And I suppose now I'm in a position of I'm working myself out of my job in some ways so I can actually be that person outside the business rather than having to work 30, 40 hours a week to deliver services. And I think that's where business owners in general, we all get a little bit stuck in that because it's, well, I can do that, so I do do it. Whereas actually, that's not the idea of starting up your business, potentially, because if you want to develop and grow it, you need to be less on the ground and more strategy and actually developing the business rather than delivering, which I do appreciate. You get started and you kind of have to do everything, don't you? Because most of the time, that's why the business has started, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, you I'm have sorry. a skill, you deliver a skill. But if you want to expand the business and develop and grow it to a point where you can maybe sell it, you need to get yourself out of the business because when you sell it, you don't want to still have to be there to keep delivering it. You want to be able to go, here you go to someone else and Absolutely. walk away with your, I suppose, payday, your your reward for having set up and developed that business at the end of the business's life for you. Absolutely. Commercial profitable enterprise can work with or without you. So uh, that's a great share again. And okay, we're chatting beforehand. You've got three young children. How do you balance your personal life and your business life? That's probably a difficult one. I would probably say a lot of the time you need to be clear on what you want and don't want to be doing. And I've been quite lucky because now as the business owner, I suppose last week I was at a circus performance for my little boy who his class are doing about the circus. And it's one of my big things that if the kids have anything at school, whether it be assemblies, whether it's performances, going to see their work, I'm always that parent. As long as they've given me sufficient notice, which is more, always going to be an issue with the school rather than my diary um my aim is to be there at everything that they do so that I can be there and present now I'm not present there every day for drop-offs and pickups but if they need me to be there for volunteering or whatever I want to be a parent that can say yes as, as often as I can to be there and I suppose having because it's the business that is my business in effect um, it does give me the freedom to kind of wipe things off. I suppose sometimes it's that clarity, like I probably do a few more evenings than I ought to do, but then I probably don't come in till a bit later because I'm helping to get the kids to school. So I don't start when the rest of the team starts. I start a bit later because that works for me, which is why I probably do an hour or two in the evening because I've not done, yeah. done what I needed to that day. So it's just finding out what works for you because I suppose some people are morning people. I'm not a morning person. I'm definitely a night owl. So you're not <laughs> going to see me up at five in the morning. Unfortunately, I know people do things like BNI and early morning and breakfast clubs. I will do them. I'm not going to say I don't, <laughs> but they're not really my cup of tea because I'm just not awake at that time. But give me in the evening something. I'm there. I, I, I do stay up probably later than I should do at times. But um, find how it works for you because then you can work the hours you want to and manage your diary. And I always figure you've got to figure out what is important to you because if going on holiday all of the time is important to you, then you've got to manage your team or manage your workload so you can fit those things in. And I've been lucky over the summer holidays. I think I was kind of tending to have a day or two off every week over the six weeks holiday and a week off so I was kind of managing and I may have worked longer hours on some of the days I wasn't working I was working but that gave me the flexibility to kind of say right today I'm not even opening the laptop which gave me the time I wanted with my children so I think Brilliant. if you know what you're trying to achieve you can kind of do it but you've just got to be clear with yourself what is the important parts of your life. No that's that's a really good share again uh, Kim I mean sort of interesting so budget coming up uh not that we can actually you know sort of uh, look into a crystal ball necessarily but in terms of the industry and the business what do you see as the main challenges going forward i think there's going to be some big hitters this time um one thing i hadn't quite appreciated until quite recently on a recent tax conference that we did was with the majority that labor have 
they've now actually got a lot of power to make fundamental changes to what we've got with our tax system. Now, the last person who had this power was back in 1997, which was Gordon Brown. And he made some fundamental changes. So although we can't exactly say what is going to happen, I think there could be fundamental shifts, fundamental changes. Gordon Brown brought in a lot of new taxes, made some quite significant, big hitting changes back in 1997. And those are some of the things we could be expecting to see at the end of the month. Rachel Reeves has been actually, funnily enough, consorting, I think, with Gordon Brown from what some of the press has said. So there is kind of that indication that we could be, I know some of the things that I've heard, it's things like abolishing national insurance or getting rid of inheritance tax or increasing capital gains or changing how we do capital gains tax. So you kind of go, those aren't necessarily small things to change our tax system. So... I don't know what is going to come, but there's potential for quite a lot of significant impact for a lot of different people. Yeah. I know the government have said that not going to be impacting the working people, but that is possibly only part of the population. So anyone maybe in jobs up to the 50, 60,000, they're probably not going to see loads of changes, but landlords, business owners, those with more money, pensioners potentially, all these may see impact in how things are being done. So it's a concerning time is probably the kind of commentary and it's going to be interesting to see what they do. And then it's going to be, I think, a couple of weeks for our industry to actually get to the, what it actually means, the nitty gritty, because obviously on a budget speech, they give you the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go into the exact detail because I know we've had that with furnished holiday lets that they've abolished some of the provisions around that but to be fair it's only in the last probably three six months we've actually seen any of the detail on that even though they announced that last year so um yeah I think we're going to see a lot of impact to business is it going to be good or bad? It's probably more likely to be bad than good. But until we see, obviously, what um, happens, we will have to wait and see for the end of the month. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, as I say, we don't have a crystal ball. We have have some inkling. But, uh, you know, we can only control the controllables, as they say. So uh, so what's been your biggest learning in business? Um, so I suppose the biggest learning is... Um, keep trying things I think was one of the thoughts I kind of had um, because without being open to new ideas new concepts you're gonna be very stagnant so it's kind of keep trying things but be selective in what you do because I know I was recently at um, an account X North conference at the end of the month where there was a room full of probably 40 50 60 different vendors showcasing software technology all sorts of different useful tools which is there for accountants, but there's many tools out there for business owners. And if you use all of them, all of a sudden, you've just got this kind of, we're using 20 different things, you're updating 20 different things, and it's not really helping the business, it's probably hindering the business. So it's just find the ones that work for you, but kind of, you need to be open to trying different things, but be selective. It's kind of a, it's not quite a... <laughs> Um, simple solution but um, if you're open to trying and developing you'll kind of hopefully develop with the tools and find that ecosystem of apps, software ways of working even that work for the business to make it as efficient effective for you and I think I've always gone down the route that you need to find win-win probably win-win wins win for your team to make life easier for them a win for you to make life easier for you and hopefully by default your client gets the best service or they get a win because you found the right software which fits for all of you or it means you've got more time to talk to them because the software is doing more of the work and there's that age-old um, word at the moment which is AI that is coming and I know the IT people are a little cautious of it because how do you protect against AI and all these different concerns but you've got AI coming in and it's how, how are we as business owners going to be using that in a safe way yeah. for our businesses going forward? And at the minute, probably many of us are going, well, let's just be cautious. But it's, it's finding these routes that hopefully 
make our businesses work better for us. So we do have those win-wins to yeah. help us continue progressing. But you've got to be open to it to start with because they all oh, know this is how we do it. I suppose I'd always give the question, why are we doing it like that? Is there a reason? If there is a reason, great, let's keep doing it like that because that's the reason. Or if, well, it's the way we've always done it, that isn't really always a good justification. It's the way we've always done it because it's still really efficient to do it that way. Great, keep doing it. If it's not, can we make it work better in our business? Because by making everything work better in our businesses, hopefully it keeps us progressing towards theoretically the end result, which is always going to be selling the business, hopefully, whether that be through retirement at the end of our business life or because you want to do something new before you get to that sort of age. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, sorry, I just saw a little bit of frog in my throat. But anyway, final question. Uh, what is the best advice you give to an 18-year-old you? Now, that is a good one. Um, let me see. So an 18-year-old me. I think it's just be open up, open to what is out there because you don't know where you're going. And I think it's very interesting with some of my younger team members. Um, I do have 16, 17, 18 year olds working the business that we're training up. I think it's it's that build relationships because you don't know who you'll meet in the future. And some of those people, you build those relationships up from 18 potentially there'll be the connections of who you are connecting with in the future. I know one of my team who left us a number of years ago and he's a friend and he joined us at 16, qualified as an accountant with us, moved on, did different things. We connected, we've always kept in touch, but we've then done different things and then we're connecting each other with different people that we're meeting because actually there'd be a really good contact for them because of what they're doing. You kind of go, you can start that at any age. And it's like, you've got friends, you've got people you work with. And I always think people who leave a sour taste in someone else's mouth is a bad idea because you don't know whether they could be the partner of the future and you're going for a job. And actually they're now the person who's recruiting you and they look at you and go, oh, I didn't like working with you when you were a kid. You were horrible. Kind of, <laughs> you're just going around, aren't you? And a lot of businesses, like I think in Derby and in some of the other cities, we're small communities actually, and we do talk to each other. <laughs> so if we're talking to each other, kind of just remember we do all talk to each other and build those relationships because you don't know where it will take you. That could someone could remember you and go, they see your name again and they go, ah, actually, they were really good when they worked for me in the past. Or, I know that name they used to work for that person they're a good person to work with or they're a, they're a kind person to work with or they they were switched on you just don't know and actually building those relationships up from at that early age you go you don't know who's going to become the introducer of the future or your business partner of the future or anything so I think it's just kind of start how you mean to go on at that that sort of age and brilliant yeah see where it goes from there absolutely fantastic what a great share there kim thanks so much for your time thanks you're welcome